Tonight, we're going to talk about who we are right now and what America will become. And I have a slew of facts for you. So we're going to look at the next generations, except... Okay. Who has my remote? Okay. Aha! Here it is. I found it. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at what's, uh, what's happening with the next generation, so not just us. So just in case you think that I'm feeling better than the last time we met, mm -hmm. not really. <laughs> Remember that from last month? Yeah. Oh yeah, we still have all the problems of which you are clearly aware. And we still have a president hell-bent on turning the USA into a socialist country, right? Yeah. Yeah, I knew you'd agree with me. Well, despite my despair and anger and worry, I've been contemplating what I could do, what we could do, and what we all should do together to save our country from that socialist threat. So I started looking for a little inspiration. I started with inspiration from nature. But um, my thoughts kept wandering to bloated budgets and supersized governments. So I said, okay, well that's not the best inspiration. So then I went to the animal kingdom. And I said, hmm. But I got sidetracked onto how some amazingly slimy people managed to get elected to public office. Yeah. Right? So I said, okay, well then I'm gonna I could go for another source of inspiration. I'm gonna look for people with creative ideas. And I said, ooh, creative uh, water. Hmm. Because normal water is full of calories, right? Uh, so then I said, okay, well, creativity, creativity doesn't necessarily equate with realistic or practical or even effective. So scratch the creative people. So then I said, ah, famous people, they're the ones. <laughs> He's famous, isn't he? I mean, you all know who he is. Well, then I said, hmm, well, even stupid, disgusting, and downright evil people can be famous, right? Yeah. So I said, famous is no help. So then I was thinking, well, you know, maybe that's what the problem is. After a long period of complacency in America from people like us, or at least me, because I've told you many times how I was complacent, I realized that I was desperately looking for help in all the wrong places. So, no more looking for help there. So last month, I told you that we needed to focus, focus, focus on the problem. Thinking that brilliant ideas would mysteriously burst forth. Well, for me, not so much. And since then, I tried prayer. And I encouraged you to do the same. But to solve any problem, you have to know your starting point. You have to know who you are and who is a people you will become as a people. So who are we today? Well tonight I'm going to reveal some trends about who we are, all of us, about who we really are, and again I'm not just talking about me and fellow Tea Partiers, but primarily I'm talking about America's young adults. And I saw we have a few in here tonight. <laughs> so, do you know who and what makes up America today? Well, sometimes it's hard to tell. It happens too quickly. You get in this room for just a few seconds, and they change the whole world outside. <laughs> that was an elevator, right? <laughs> okay. Well, here's what I know about our world. It's as though we have been carried away by a tornado of change to a confusing and surreal land called progress Ozism. <laughs> and here we stand like Dorothy, in amazement and confusion with that deer in the headlights look on our faces wondering, where are we? And how do we get to progress Ozism? Well, you probably know that I'm a facts kind of person, trained by the best, Sergeant Joe Friday. No emotion, no rhetoric, just the facts, ma'am. So let's look at facts tonight about our crazy land 
of Progress Ozism, and some of the major changes that emerged in 2012. Now this is research from Pew Research Organization, and it says that, it shows that, the United States is a radically different place than it was when you and I were children. When we were young adults and even five years ago. Keep in mind that a recent speaker said that culture is upstream from politics and therefore it changes politics. I don't know if you remember that from last meeting, but that struck me big time. So you must consider how the social trends we're discussing are going to change the political scene. So socially, the changes in the way that our young adults live are astounding. Now, if you've, if you've seen this one, you know, give me a nod of the head. When it comes to education, a record one in three young adults are college graduates. That's the first time ever in 2012. One in three. 25 to 29 year olds have a bachelor's degree. Then we have college debt. Well, our young adults, with more women than men, are obtaining a college education, but that comes at a price, a big price. 19%, nearly one-fifth of homes in the United States, now owe student debt. And that is up big time. In 2010, more than doubled from two decades earlier. So think about it. Everyone wants their child to go to college, and a huge number of them, parents and children alike, are willing to go into debt to ensure that degree. But is it legitimate debt? Well, let me tell you about the story that I heard this last week. My friend is sending her son to an out-of-state school, so that's out-of-state tuition she has to pay, house him in the Taj Mahal of apartments. I couldn't believe all the goodies she was telling me it had pay for fraternity expenses, and provide him with a brand new Lexus. <laughs> but she won't pay any of the rest of his expenses he has to get a student loan. I mean, does that make sense to you? I'm not sure this story is all that unusual, as a matter of fact. So here we got these kids going off to school, getting their degrees, getting student loans, and meanwhile, we have tough economic times. So we have these recent college graduates where they've got the economy playing havoc with them. And jobs, well, they all come pouring out of college. Are they able to put their degrees to work? Well, sadly, 53% of America's recent college graduates are either unemployed or working in a job that does not require a college degree. Such as that one. Or McDonald's or other places like that. And according to uh, CNN Money, in August 2012, the percentage of young people who counted in the labor force fell to its lowest level since 1955. Okay, what else is happening to them demographically? Well, that's the numbers game, right? Well, what's happening to them is they are deciding this. I'm not getting married until much later. And I'm not getting married at all. In fact, they are waiting about seven years longer to get married than people my age waited. Or even the people who are slightly younger than me are waiting. They also are avoiding the commitment entirely. They're just cohabiting. And so what does that affect on the next thing? Well, guess what? The U.S. birth rate has fallen to a record low. Some of you may have heard that we have to have a 2.1 um, average baby per woman in order to reproduce ourselves. Hmm, if it weren't for immigrants, we wouldn't even have that. We've got more young adults going to college, living with mom and dad, and it should come as no surprise to you that 31% of them have postponed getting married or having a baby, which has caused the birth rate to decline 8% in the last three years. Well, so, we got all these good things happening to our young adults. Now, almost one third of our young adults live with their parents. Now, can you imagine a situation where we have young adults living with their parents and they like it? <laughs> well, sure. 
Wouldn't you like it if mom was doing your laundry, dad was washing your car, and in many cases, taking care of your kids? Oh yeah, well that's good. So they're staying around until their 30s. So the lion wants to know, don't parents have courage? Don't they have the courage to just say no and tell their children to start acting like adults? Hey, let them starve like we did when we were that age. How many of you had that situation? It's like, no money for food or anything. Okay, next trend, religion. Here's what else is affecting our young adults. You and I know that religion has taken a big hit. The number of Americans who do not identify with any religion continues to grow at a rapid pace. So one third of adults under 30 are religiously unaffiliated today. One third are religiously unaffiliated. The highest percentage ever in the Pew Research Center polling. So the question is, is has the heart and soul of America gone out of us? How can we be a moral people governing ourselves when we have no values or no standards by which to measure? Where there are no rights or wrongs because everything is relative, right? Well, the Tin Man, the Tin Man, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped that side. 88% of them are not looking for a religion. So the Tin Man certainly knew about the importance of having a heart and a soul and a connection to God. So sad these all together. You've got higher education, high college debt, living with mom and dad, decline of marriage, lowered birth rate, and a lack of religion that stresses right and wrong. And it leads to a guaranteed result. Adulthood begins later than it used to. Does this, who, who does this surprise? You've seen it in your own families, I'm sure. But the trick is, parents want it that way. So in a 1993 Newsweek poll, 80% of parents with young children said children should be financially independent from their parents by the age of 22. How many of you were financially independent from your parents by the age of 22? Oh, look at that. Well, guess what? One third of today's parents say children shouldn't have to be on their own financially until age 25. Sugar Daddy government obviously agrees, since it forces companies to keep so-called uh, children on their parents' life insurance until they're 26. Uh, now, wait a minute, these kids are not going to be adults until they're 25 or 26, but their parents were the ones who went out and fought for uh, uh, the right to be an adult at what age? 18. But they don't want their kids to become adults until they're 26. Maybe we should change the age of a uh, majority to 26. That'd be interesting. So here's the kicker. More than one-third say that as a result of the poor economy, they have gone back to, guess where? School. Oh, I can't get a job, I'll go back to school. Which leads to? Debt. Which leads to the family being in? Debt. I mean, it all comes together when you look at it like that, and it's like, oh my gosh, what are the parents and sugar daddy government and these generous taxpayers out here thinking who foot the bill and are co-conspirators in allowing adulthood to be postponed indefinitely. So, the scarecrow wants to say, and I thought I was brainless, what are they thinking? So, yikes, with all these accumulated problems, it's like the wicked witch of the West is sicking those monkeys on us. So, let's take a look at the situation then. We have overwhelming problems and daunting changes. You might say we need some magical help to find solutions. However, if someone comes to you and says, I'm Glinda, I'm from the government, and I'm here to help, <laughs> what are you going to say? Here. No, thank you very much. In the land of progress Ozism, there are no magical shoes, no fairy godmother wand, and no attack dog Toto. Instead, what we have is a floundering government run by an inept and dominating leader, the wizard of progress Ozism, who wants to raise taxes but not curtail spending distorts every situation for political gain and is working to turn America 
into a socialist state by, let me quote Philip Neyman, imperial degree, de decree. Right, Philip? So, if you're feeling like the cowardly lion, the brave inside a scarecrow, and the heartless tin man combined, hoping for a magic wand, red shoes, and a wizard to provide us with a solution to return to our cowardly roots, uh-uh. Didn't work for Dorothy, won't work for us. We've been 40 years of naive and uncomprehending as Dorothy and recognizing the truth that our country is being taken over by socialists and they need to be stopped. Yes. We can do it. We can do it. We must do it. Right? But our challenge is to be a moral force. We're standing up against the dissolution of society with the progressive agenda of leveling morals and family and values. So we have the good forces on our, on our side. Because unlike most progressives, we are a moral and religious people. We do have brains and courage and heart to take on the task of defeating the wicked. We can go ahead and defeat the wicked witch of progressism. You see, we have the heart to spread the Tea Party message of free markets, fiscal responsibility, and constitutionally limited government. And we can pray for new converts. We have the brain to use the social media and newspapers and public meetings such as the City Council, thank you Sam Wong and Adrian, for taking care of that for us, to educate others about our stance. And we have the courage to stand up against progressives who want to take away our constitutional rights, which you heard all about this entire evening. So, do you agree with what I just said? Yes. yes. Stand up. Stand up. Get ready to shout your agreement. Are you ready? You see, we are the modern day Tea Party with a 17... 76 attitude, right?